Hi everyone, my name is Berkeley and I am the production manager for the I Can Do That Theater Company and we are here with our interview series and today we are interviewing Caitlin McNeilage. So, Hi. <laughs> um, Hi everyone. Uh, yeah, Caitlin, why don't you just start off and uh, tell everyone a little bit about yourself. Sure, yeah. Hi everyone. Uh, I'm Caitlin, like Berkeley said. I am an actor and a producer, singer in New York City, and I graduated from NYU Tisch School of the Arts a couple years ago. And Berkeley and I actually know each other because right after graduation, I headed to the Bay Area for the first time ever uh, <laughs> to do a production of A Midsummer Night's Dream with San Francisco Shakespeare Festival. And that is how we met. So that was my first uh, little dose of the Bay Area and my first professional show too, right out of school. Um, and then right after that, I went home for what I thought was just a quick little visit before going back to New York and Hurricane Michael um, hit my hometown of Panama City, Florida. It was a category five hurricane, it was terrible, and um, my childhood house was just wrecked and the whole town was pretty much destroyed. Um, and so I went, I stayed home longer than expected to kind of help my mom and, um, you know, just kind of go through everything in our house and try to see what, what made it. Um, and then I went back to New York and I just kind of felt like, I couldn't just go back and go back to life as normal in New York. I needed to do what I could to help. Um, and I started thinking about it and, you know, I realized I don't know anything about uh, finding housing for people or fixing things after a natural disaster. Um, but what I do know is theater and I know a lot of uh, theater people in New York. I've been really lucky to make some really um, amazing connections in my time in New York. So I called in pretty much every favor I've ever had. Uh, and was able to put together a benefit concert at Feinstein's 54 Below, which is a cabaret uh, concert venue in New York. And we did a whole benefit concert with, I think we had about 12 different Broadway performers from Hamilton and Frozen and Wicked, um, Mean Girls, all sorts of shows. Uh, and they all came together and they gave their services and their time and their talent and put on an amazing concert. So that was really my first um, kind of introduction to producing, was uh, producing that concert. And now I've kind of gotten into that a little bit more and am really enjoying kind of learning that side of the business. And, uh, you know, I think as an actor, it can be hard sometimes to sit around and go to auditions and wait for someone to give you a job. And so I think it's kind of amazing to be able to write or produce or create your own work um, instead of just waiting around and you know letting someone else tell you when you can work and when you can't. Um, I think it's kind of amazing to just be able to create your own work. So that's what I've been working on more recently until now when the whole world shut down. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. now we're here, but that's okay because we're doing this and we're still creating and um, getting to work together with other artists just virtually. So I'm yeah. happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. Um, so I just want to ask to just start off, like, when did you know that this like theatrical creative world was the world that you wanted to go into? Like what sparked that uh, desire for you? Yeah, um, I mean, to be honest, this is kind of a lame answer, I guess, but I've pretty much always known. Um, my dad likes to take credit because when I was a kid, he put um, musical instruments in my crib <laughs> because he was determined that I was going to be, well, he thought I was going to be a country music singer and I was going to be like a big uh, musical superstar. Oh. And that so sorry, dad, but uh, at least <laughs> I did go into the kind of musical creative world. Um, but yeah, I mean, even in kindergarten, I went to career day, we had a little career day and I went dressed as a movie star. So I've kind of always known I wanted to act uh, and sing and do something like that, perform, be creative. Um, and I think it wasn't until, I mean, it, like I said, I always knew that, but I didn't actually think necessarily as theater as a career until I got into maybe middle school and started doing the plays and shows with my middle school um, 
it was basically our drama club. We called it performance music. Um, but I really, and then I started listening to like cast albums of different Broadway yeah. shows. And I went to see a couple Broadway shows. And that I think was when I really was like, oh, okay. I always knew I wanted to perform, but all I had ever seen was like, oh, a movie star. Oh, you know, I'll be Hannah Montana. Like <laughs> that was kind of all I knew was like movie star, pop star. Um, and then I kind of found the world of theater in middle school and decided, okay, more specifically, I want to do that. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. What are some of your favorite roles that you have gotten to play? Ooh. Um, okay, so my senior year of high school, I got to be Belle in Beauty and the Beast, and that is my favorite, most special role ever. Um, I'm a big Disney girl. I love Disney so much. I grew up in Florida, like I said, so as I'm sure you guys in California can relate, grew up uh, going to Disney a lot since it was in the same state. Um, so I love Disney, so that was really, really special. And my high school, now they do actually, but back when I was in high school, we didn't have our own um, theater. And so we would always have to perform at other high school's theaters. But that year in particular, my uh, drama teacher applied for a grant from our local arts organization in town. And we got to perform our show at the big civic center in our town. So that was really special because that was the place where I saw my first shows, you know, traveling, touring productions. Um, and so that was really special and it was such a big venue that it was really neat to get to perform there. Um, what are some of my other favorites? I got to be Elle Woods in Legally Blonde, which is funny because I'm very, very brunette. Um, <laughs> but that was a lot of fun. Oh yeah, I've seen the wig. I remember oh, now. Okay. Remember. It, was not, it was not good. I hope the performances were better than the wig. Um, <laughs> Oof. Uh, okay, what else? Oh, I got to play. So obviously now I would never play this role, but in college you play roles that aren't necessarily, you're not the right age for because everyone is, you know, 21 or however old. But I got to play Martha in Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. Um, so I hope one day I get to play that again when I'm older. Um, yeah, I don't know. Those are some of the, the ones I think of right off the bat. Yeah, awesome. Um, so we have a question from Sean, and he was asking about the application process for NYU Tisch. Like, what was that like? Yeah, so college auditions are a whole beast of their own, uh, of their own thing. So I didn't realize, but you really need to start the college application and audition process pretty early on. I didn't actually really start that process until senior year of high school began. And I would definitely recommend um, to all the upcoming high school seniors to go ahead and start that summer before senior year, or maybe even towards the end of junior year, just getting organized, making sure you know exactly what colleges you want to apply for and audition for, and just getting because they all ask for different things, which is so crazy to me. Um, so you'll have to write different essays for each one. And then as far as the actual audition process for the theater programs, I only auditioned at four, which once I got to college, I realized that was actually not very many. A lot of my friends at NYU were like, oh yeah, I auditioned for 20, like I auditioned for 18, you know, 12. And I was like, what? <laughs> I'm so lucky I got into college, I guess. Because um, my odds were not, uh, I, didn't, I didn't give myself as good of odds as they did. Um, but I auditioned for four colleges and every single one of them asked for slightly different audition materials. So you know, if you're auditioning musical theater like I did, that is usually two contrasting monologues and then two contrasting uh, songs, usually 32 bar cuts or 16 bar cuts. Um, and so they want an up-tempo and a ballad and they want a usually comedy and drama monologue. Um, but then it really varies on the school what they ask for. NYU, I believe, was pretty open. Um, they just said contrasting. Some schools specifically wanted one of the monologues to be classical or Shakespeare. Um, I had one school ask me for, to do an art song or an aria, which was very specific. Yeah, um, yeah th there's just a wide range. Some schools only wanted one monologue and two songs or the other way around. Um, but NYU specifically, I believe it was, it was both two monologues and two songs. Um, and then they also did, which I actually really like about NYU's process, they sit you down after you do your monologues and they might give you a note or something to try differently and then you'll do it again. Uh, that's important because really when they're giving you that, they just want to see that you can take direction and that you can, you know, kind of be open-minded and try it a different way. 
Uh, but then they sit you down and they do a little interview with you and it's just 10 minutes long. And sometimes the questions are as simple as, you know, what's your favorite book or what's your favorite movie? And then some of them are a little deeper, like why, you know, what kind of artist do you want to be? Or why did you decide you wanted to do this? Um, and I actually really liked that about them because I feel like sometimes the college audition process can be so, uh, formal and so quick that you're in and out of the room before you even really know what just happened. And I felt like they were really getting the time, uh, taking the time to get to know us a little better and not just basing whether or not we got in, you know, on who could belt the highest note or um, do a triple pirouette. You know, they were, they were basing it on who we were and if we were the kind of person they wanted to have around and if we were people who seemed eager and interested and, um, you know, not, people that are going to be stuck up or arrogant or think they don't, they're too good for this, you know. And so I, I really liked that about them, but that was unique. I think that was the only school I really did that for. But um, yeah, it's a long process. It's a long day. Uh, they also have, for people who can't travel to New York for the audition, I actually did my audition in Atlanta. Um, and I believe they have auditions in like Atlanta, Chicago. They might have one out in California. Okay. Um, so they do have a few around the country if uh, New York is too far to travel for you. And yeah, it's kind of a long day if you're doing musical theater. Like I said, you'll usually do a little dance combination um, and then you you do the, the song for one judge or one, I don't want to call them judge, but you know what I mean, auditor, yeah. I guess. Um, so you'll do the song for them and then you'll wait again and then go in the other room to do the, the acting portion. So it's a long day and obviously nerve wracking. Um, but I found it a really positive experience, uh, at least from my own personal experience. I really enjoyed the day. I found them very, they did a really good job of making us feel comfortable and reminding us that, you know, just to do our best. And it wasn't necessarily about our talent because, um, you know, that's why you're going to college. That's why you're going and applying to these programs is not because you're the world's most talented person and your craft is perfect and you've just got it all nailed down or else you wouldn't need college, you know? Um, and so they really let us know that that was the case and we didn't have to feel pressure to be perfect. They just wanted to see what we had to offer and who we were. Um, and so that's kind of how my audition process was. And then I found out a couple, I believe I auditioned in January and then I found out in mid-March that I was accepted to Tisch, but I didn't know what studio yet. Tisch has different studios in the acting program. So you might be placed in the music theater studio. You might be placed in one that does a certain um, acting technique, like the Meisner technique. Um, there's all sorts of different ones. So I think we had to wait about another month or so before we found out what studio we were placed in. But um, yeah, that's kind of a little bit about the process for NYU, at least how it was five, six, Seven years ago? When was that? I don't even know. Uh, 2014 yeah. when I auditioned, so six years ago, I guess. Um, I hope it hasn't changed and I'm giving you wrong advice, but that's pretty standard, though, for most college auditions other than the interview. Yeah, awesome. Thank you for sharing that and giving everyone a little bit of advice on making sure not to wait until, you yeah. know, too close. <laughs> It's hard because I didn't realize, but senior year itself is so busy. And, you know, by that time when you're a senior, you're usually, at least at my school, the way we did it is the seniors were, oh my gosh, that's an alarm going off. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> the seniors were the ones that were presidents of clubs and that were on the homecoming court. And, you know, there's prom and there's, we had a thing called grad bash where we went on this big senior trip to Disney World. And there's just all sorts of things going on. You're maybe taking AP classes or, you know, making sure your grades are in order for your college admissions you're writing essays for all these different college uh colleges that you're applying for plus if you're doing the theater program you're doing separate ap separate applications so it's just a lot to handle i definitely definitely recommend getting started that summer before because i was overwhelmed <laughs> yeah so uh as you mentioned earlier uh the san francisco shakespeare festival was kind of your first gig that you did after graduating it was yeah, it was right after you graduated. Um, what was what was it like to be in your first professional show? And for those of you that don't know, San Francisco Shakes is a little different because it's like a traveling show. So you do it at like four different locations and you're like constantly moving the set and the lights and 
and it's yeah. also outdoors so there's like a little bit of background <laughs> for that yeah it was wild so I literally went right after graduation I graduated college my mom and I went on a quick little celebratory uh, graduation trip and then I came back from that and I want to say it was three days later I moved to San Francisco um, and I had never been to San Francisco or the Bay Area in my life. The first, my first day there was when I had my suitcases and I was on my way to the apartment I had had to find ahead of time virtually, which was a whole challenge um, in itself. But yeah, it was such a unique experience because I was right out of school. I was so excited to be working on my first show, but I also hadn't had a whole lot of experience with Shakespeare before then. Um, I had done actually what's funny is I had done a Midsummer Night's Dream before in high school and played the same role. I, I under I was a fairy and understudied Helena, which is what I did uh, professionally too, which is funny. But it, I was very nervous. I was so nervous. I said, oh, I thought, oh my gosh, you know, all these actors are going to be, they will be Shakespeare actors. Like they will, <laughs> they will be people who know how to do this and know the technique behind it and are very familiar with the language. Um, so as soon as I found out I was cast, I bought the script and just started memorizing right away all of Helena's lines. Um, so I went even to that very first day of rehearsal with at least some of that language under my belt already, you know, starting to memorize it because I knew it would take me longer than everyone else. Um, but yeah, it was such a unique experience being outdoors. I had never done an outdoor show. I had never done a traveling show. Um, I also was so unfamiliar with the climate in the, the Bay Area that I did not realize that at one location we'd be at, it would be freezing once the sun went down. And then another location, we would be sweating to death in the sun, you know. So that was kind of a fun, unique challenge. Um, and then understudying is such a challenge alone that I really had to work on making sure I was paying attention at every rehearsal. I understudied two different roles. So I had to make sure I was watching both of their sets of blocking. I was memorizing their lines. I was taking lots of notes and things would change too daily. And so I would write, write always write in pencil in your script. Um, I would write everything in pencil and I'd constantly be erasing and rewriting and, you know, as an understudy, sometimes you don't get a lot of rehearsal time. Sometimes um, you just kind of, it's up to you to sit on the sidelines and watch and make sure you're taking notes um, because there's a chance that you will not get rehearsal time. And that actually happened to me for one of my understudy roles. We were scheduled to have understudy rehearsal, I believe the next weekend and someone got injured and I had to go on right before the show started with no understudy rehearsal. So that was terrifying. <laughs> That was one of the craziest things I've ever done. Um, but I got through it because I had taken those really good notes and I had my script backstage with all my notes in it so that every time I got off stage in between scenes, I would be looking ahead to the next scene like, okay, what am I, you know, so I didn't have to have it all in my head at one time, which was nice because I had such good notes. Um, and obviously the rest of the cast literally dragged me through it, helping me so much. But uh, yeah, it was such a crazy experience. And then at the end of the summer, I actually got to go on and play the last three performances as Helena, um, which was really exciting. And my parents both got to come out um, and see my first leading uh, professional role. So that was amazing. And it was a really special experience. I'm so glad I got to have it because now I feel like I can conquer anything. So yeah. Yeah, that was that was a really good cast too. I think you learn like the more that you work with professional actors, how much it is just about like the team and supporting each other. It doesn't matter who the main role is and who's an understudy or ensemble. I feel like sometimes in college it can get a little tricky because everyone's like, I want to be, the I don't know. It's a little more catty, I feel like. And then yeah, absolutely the cast. Well, yeah, and when you're in high school or college, I feel like, at least I felt this way, that you only have four years to, you know, play certain roles and to, to get the part you want or to do the show you want. And so it, it, everything feels so important and feels so, you know, oh, if I don't get a lead this year, I only have three years left, or I only have, you know. And so I think that, that kind of helps put that pressure on too. And once you're in the professional world, you have your whole life, you know, it's so cheesy sounding, but it's true. It's, you know, I want to do this forever. So it's nice to know that it's not, um, there's no time pressure situation here. It's just, I'm playing the long game, I like to say. So it doesn't matter how long it takes uh, to, 
find success or to play the roles that I'm dreaming of playing. It'll all happen. It just might take a little while longer. So, yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Um, moving into a little bit of a different topic, you also get to work with the Broadway princess parties with like Courtney Reed and Susan Egan and Laura Osnos and all of those people. Like, how did you get involved in that? And what is that experience like? Sure. Um, so like a lot of cool things that have happened to me in my life, I was just kind of lucky and in the right place at the right time. Um, I don't even know. It's kind of a long story, but I met Laura just through um, taking a lesson with her. And then she introduced me to Courtney, um, who had a company she was making at the time and needed some help with. So I helped her with that and we became friends. Um, and then actually I kind of have the Bay Area to thank because when I came to do Midsummer, I got there two or three days maybe before rehearsal was supposed to start just to make sure I had time to settle in and everything. And it just so happened that that same weekend before rehearsal started, they were doing a Broadway princess party in San Francisco. Um, and so I texted Courtney because I was planning on just coming to see the show anyway, of course, to support them. And I texted her because I was landing in time to make it to that show that the show that night if they you know needed help and so i texted her and said hey you know i'm around i don't know if you guys need help um but i just thought i'd offer if you don't no big deal uh but she texted back and she said oh my gosh wait no please will you please come like we're we're like drowning in all this work like please come help us um and so i went and i helped them that whole weekend and that was kind of their first real weekend of doing this traveling show. It started in New York, at, also at Fine Science 54 Below. Um, and then they kind of transitioned it into this traveling show and they go all around the country. Um, and that was one of the first weekends where they were really kind of figuring that out and testing that out. And um, so yeah, I was really lucky to be able to help them. Um, and then I ended up helping them in LA as well. When I was in California doing the show, I went to visit Courtney in LA. Um, and now anytime they come to New York, I, I help out and um, help out some behind the scenes too for them. I always help them at Broadway Con, which is a big, as it sounds, convention of Broadway fans in New York that happens once a year. Um, and yeah, I just feel so lucky. I get to kind of be a very, very small part of the team. And it's been really neat to watch this kind of grow over the past two years, I guess, and it's been around longer than that, but just in the past two years, since they've kind of been doing these traveling shows, it has just grown so much and they've moved on to these huge venues and they've gotten, they've added new princesses in who come. Sometimes uh, Christy Altamar performs with them sometimes. And uh, I believe you pronounce it Annalise Vanderpool from, um, she was on That's a Raven. And mm -hmm. she also played Belle in Beauty and the Beast on Broadway. So she's done shows and who, uh, Ariel Jacobs from Aladdin and all sorts of people. So it's just really grown and um, they've been doing all sorts of amazing things and they, uh, they have other hopes and dreams of how it will grow, but it's just been really neat to watch it. And it's completely, you know, female run and female empowerment. And I love, like I said, I'm a huge, huge Disney nerd. So I love going to the shows and hearing all these songs I grew up with, um, sung by women that I know and look up to as friends and artists. So it's been a really neat thing to be a very small part of, but yeah. So that's all back to the Bay Area too. <laughs> Who knew all this would come back to the Bay Area? <laughs> it's, all, it's all about California. It really is, apparently. <laughs> um, yeah, so is that, like, stressful, just jumping into it and, like, not having, knowing, like, that specific type of experience? Because I'm sure you were doing, like, a lot of, like, backhand, like, assistant, producing assistant, like, stage manager -y type work. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm basically just there to help with whatever they need. Sometimes I help sell the merchandise. Sometimes I help backstage. Sometimes I help whatever they need, carry stuff. <laughs> um, but it's, yeah, it is. It can be stressful sometimes, um, especially at their bigger shows when they have so many people coming and there's so much to do. And, um, you know, you want to make sure the show goes off without a hitch, especially because they are such professionals and they're so talented that you never want something on your end to be the reason that there's, you know, kind of a hiccup in the show. Um, but yeah, I mean, for the most part, they know what they're doing and they're, they do such a good job. They really kind of run this whole thing themselves um, and run the company and Susan created the, um, all the merchandise that they sell and she's kind of in charge of that. And 
they have together created the script and the set list and all of that. So it really, it, they're such professionals. They do such a good job. Um, and I'm just really there to kind of help whatever they need and take, uh, I take Instagram videos for them in the back <laughs> and send them to them so they have stuff to post. Um, but yeah, you know, it's like I said, I'm a super small part of it. I'm, they fully could do it without me, but, um, it's been really nice to just be a small part of it and see it grow so much and get to even just watch them do the shows is inspiring because they are where I would love to be with my career in 10 or 20 or 30 years, um, whenever, whenever I can make it to that point. So it's, uh, it's definitely been very inspiring for me to get to watch. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, well, I want to ask, uh, one more kind of different segue question um you also talked about in your little introduction organizing your um benefit concert and that was huge like i was following all your instagram stuff and yeah you had all these amazing broadway performers that were performing songs for that and just like it was really cool to see all these different shows and actors and actresses like come together what was that process like? That was a crazy process because, I mean, first of all, I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> I had never produced anything before. I had never put on a concert. Um, I really was kind of going in blind and it ended up being, I didn't realize when I started, but in order to collect the money, because a lot of people wanted to donate but couldn't necessarily make it to New York to go to the show. And so I realized that we would raise more money if I was able to collect donations um, outside of ticket sales. And in order to do that, I had to open a bank account in the name you know, of the concert. And in order to do that, I had to open a nonprofit organization and register it with the state of Florida and apply for tax exempt status with the IRS and do all of this that I had no idea how to do. Um, so I had a lot of help, like I said, from a lot of people back home. I had a bank back home that was helping me. Um, a lot of people talking me through the process. I said, I don't know how to register a nonprofit organization. <laughs> um, but yeah, we got through that. And then I really did. I mean, I, I asked Courtney and Laura um, and the girls for any, uh, why I would love, have, would have loved to have them perform, but they were all out of town or had other engagements that night. Um, but they were so nice. They gave me email addresses of friends and they reached out to friends for me. And that was a big part of the reason I was able to get uh, a lot of the bigger stars that were in it. Uh, and then honestly, I just, I was because it was kind of a hard time of year. It was January, and so it was right after the holidays when a lot of people are so busy with so many concerts and engagements that I think a lot of people were either out of town taking their vacation in January or it was just kind of a crazy time. Um, so I started just reaching out to people. I would go to different Broadway shows um, and I would go to their cast pages and I would look at the cast and I just started sending different cast members of each Broadway show um, messages on Instagram because if that was the only way I could get in touch with them. And, you know, I was like, they're going to think I'm crazy. They don't know who I am. <laughs> like, who is this girl? And I know a lot of them probably get lots of messages. So I was hoping I wasn't annoying anyone. But I just explained, you know, the situation and explained what happened and how I was personally connected and asked if there was any way they'd be interested in performing. And I kid you not, I had at least three or four of my performers that ended up doing the show just from that, just from randomly reaching out um, over Instagram message, which I'm not saying I suggest necessarily for other people for the future, because that could probably be annoying. But um, I think it's only because it, I think I wouldn't recommend doing that if you're just trying to produce a concert or put on a show um, kind of professionally, but since it was for a good cause and to raise money, I think people were more willing to help. Um, but yeah, it was it was amazing. I couldn't believe how it all came together. And um, everyone at Fine Science 54 Below was amazing. And they were so helpful because like I said, I had no idea what I was doing. So they made the graphic for me for all the um, marketing and uh, they, you know, totally knew what they were doing. And so they ran sound check smoothly and the show smoothly and I was just kind of there to make sure everyone showed up um and you know had, you did I had a lot to, more than that you did uh, a lot more than that <laughs> had to, I did have to um rent some rehearsal spaces and make sure everyone who wanted to could rehearse and uh actually the music director from Broadway Princess Party Benjamin Rahala 
um, he was our music director and he was a huge part of why everything went so smoothly. And he also got a couple of our performers, um, just friends of his. Uh, and he is amazing, amazingly talented. He's done so many concerts like this before, so he knew exactly, you know, how to do this. He was he was very relaxed about it. He's like, oh yeah, no big deal. We'll just do that. And I was like, it is a big deal. I don't know how to do any of this. <laughs> Please help. Um, so yeah, it it just it went so smoothly. I had a lot of people, amazing people, donate, um, and it just it ran so smoothly. I was so proud of it, and um, I wish everyone in the world could have been there to see it because they put on an amazing show. Uh, every single performer, it just was like one after one where I was like, oh, well, that's the best song we're gonna hear tonight. And then the next person would come on. And I said, well, <laughs> and they were all just so good. Um, so yeah, it was a really unique opportunity. I told everyone, people started to say to me, they're like, you know, I think you could do this whole producing thing if you, and I said, I will never do this again. This is the most stressful, insane thing I have ever done. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, but now that it's been about a year, I have slowly started dipping my toe back into producing because I did really enjoy that, um, that side of things. But it was, it was a lot of work. I probably should have taken on a whole team of people to help me as opposed to trying to do most of it on my own. But uh, it all got done and it, it went off without a hitch. So I was really relieved. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. And like you said, it was for a great cause and it's just so cool to see like the artist collaboration and it's just awesome how, yeah, yeah artists are just willing, like even right now, like, yeah, absolutely. It was so neat. Every single one of them, you know, I felt like they were doing me the biggest favor in the entire world. And every single one of them, you know, said, thank you so much for letting us be a part of this. Or, you know, this was such a, a beautiful thing. We're so thankful we got to help. You know, it was so inspiring to me that they all felt honored to be there when I was just so tickled that they would even, you know, care to show up. Um, and they all did it. You know, they donated their time. So it was, I just was so over the moon that they would even be there, let alone feel grateful to be there. So it was a very, it was a special night. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, we're going to wrap up this interview. Uh, before I sign off, is there any last little thing of advice or just words of wisdom you want to share with uh, any of the kids that are watching? Oh, goodness. That's a lot of pressure. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Um, I think when I was a kid trying to do this, um, first of all, I was never the most talented kid in the room. <laughs> I always, it was always, uh, I think, kind of a stretch to everyone around me that they thought that I could go on to be a professional. So I guess that's my first thing is that if you feel like, you know, you have a long way to go, um, that's, that should never stop you. Because first of all, talent what is talent anyway you know it's so um it's kind of a silly word and everyone is talented in their own way and i personally think that hard work um and a good attitude and being just so persistent and never giving up is more important than talent anyway um and being a good person to have in the room just like i was saying earlier with being an understudy making sure you know you're always prepared and you're putting in the work um, I think that's the most important thing at the end of the day. And uh, also, you know, you can always take class and, and work and grow your talent and your abilities, but um, making sure that you are a good person to have in the room and a hard worker, I think is the most important thing at the end of the day. Um, and I think just, I mean, it's so, it sounds so cheesy, but just never give up. Um, because I set my sights on NYU and on New York when I was very young, like I said, and you know, I used to have kids in middle school, you know, laugh or say, oh, well, what's your backup plan? You know, that's not very realistic. And I just refused to do that. I said, no, I'm sorry, I don't have a backup plan um, because I will figure it out. I'll make it work and I'll just keep trying until I make it work. And if I don't end up getting into a theater program for college, I will figure something else out. I'll figure out another way. Um, 
And I just think that's the moral of the story, that there always is another way. Like I said, you can write, you can produce, you can make your own work, you can teach and still be in the industry. I have friends who work in PR for Broadway. Um, I have friends who um, teach dance or teach voice lessons or, um, you know, produce, like I said, all sorts of different uh, facets of the industry. And so I think, you know, if maybe it doesn't work out exactly the way you plan. There's always another way to be involved in this industry and to be creative and to use your talents uh, to be around other artists and to get to do the thing you love. Because I think at the end of the day, that's more important than uh, doing something stable or you know realistic, like they told me in middle school. Mm -hmm. um, I think I feel so lucky to be able to do what I love every single day and live in the city that I uh, dreamed of living in my whole life and being around around Broadway and theater every day, even if maybe I haven't made it to Broadway myself yet. So I think that's the most important thing to remember is just never give up. And there's always room for more people in this industry and all the various aspects of it. So <laughs> it was a lot of rambling, but I think that's my great. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much, Caitlin. We really enjoyed having you. And yeah, just thanks again. Of course. Thank you so much for having me.